With so many models to choose from, picking the right gaming laptop can be difficult, so to hopefully make this decision a bit easier, I decided to test three of some of the most popular picks, and I came to realize all three were about to look at, I fell in love with, but in slightly different ways, and you'll understand what I mean as soon as we get going, so don't worry. Now, all three options are priced around $1000, and I do think this is a nice sweet spot if you're looking for the best bang for your buck. Anyway, here's my top three recommendations based on the gaming laptops I've been testing throughout the year so far, and in case you find anything you like, I have everything listed down below. But before we get started, make sure to leave a like on the video that will help the channel out a ton, and with that said, yeah, let's dive into my first recommendation. Coming in at just over $1000, the Asus Predator Helios 300 gaming laptop is a personal favorite on the list. From the keyboard, build quality, screen and cooling, Acer has done a terrific job with the Predator 300. I think it's got a nice balance in terms of design, you can sort of see the gaming details, but it's not over the top. And kudos to Acer for using as much aluminum as possible, which doesn't just make the laptop feel more premium, it also handles access a lot better. Now in terms of specifications, this unit features an Intel Core i7 9750H processor along with an Nvidia GeForce GTX 1660 Ti. The Predator also comes with 16GB of VRAM and 512GB of NVMe flash based SSD. And so based on these specs guys, we should expect to meet pretty much all games recommendations, which is mighty impressive and it shows how far gaming laptops have evolved in the last couple of years. But it gets even better. The Helios 300 has a 15.6 inch 144Hz display too. This is an IPS display and these are known for having better color reproduction and better viewing angles and neither of those yet disappoint her either. As for portability, the Helios has a relatively small footprint with a weight of a modest 2.3 kilograms and a thickness of just over 20 millimeters. In terms of ports, Acer has equipped the Helios 300 with all the ports that most gamers should be needing. As for ventilation, we find large ventilation grills on both sides as well as two additional ventilation grills on the back of the device too. Now, as soon as you boot up the system, you find a nifty software called Predator Sense. And this software does not only allow you to monitor the CPU and GPU temperature, but it also lets you overclock them. Inside here, you can also change the keyboard RGB back lightning as well as fine tune fan curves, etc. And I find this software to be very useful. Now, speaking of the processor and the graphics card, thanks to fairly strong components especially on the CPU side, you will notice that you can run pretty much any game you throw at the Predator. But because of this fast processor, I would specifically recommend this machine to you that is primarily looking to play games competitively. Now, thanks to the 144Hz display and fast CPU, games such as Fortnite and Valorant will run great and you will hit that 144fps with no problems. 6GB of video memory is what I would say enough for 1080p gaming even for those those high-end GPU bound AAA titles. The only thing I'm missing here is ray tracing support, which this 1660 is obviously lacking. The battery life is also not the greatest. I managed to squeeze out about an hour of intense gaming, which isn't the best in the field. But overall, with all things considered for what you're paying, this is a brilliant machine I cannot recommend enough for anyone that is looking to play, you know, fast-paced eSport games and take advantage of that 144Hz display. But yeah, even more. You you know, GPU bound games will also run just great on this as well. And links to where you can pick this up can be found down below. Moving on to number two on the list. If you ever wanted a gaming laptop and thought, you know what, 15.6 inches solutions would be too big for me, then this Asus Sephiroth G14 equipped with AMD's all new 7nm 40 Ryzen under the hood might be the one for you. Now, the Sephiroth G14 is one of very few 14 inch gaming laptops on the market, and this definitely makes a stand out on this crowded 15.6 inch space. What makes this notebook special is not the sheer size or its insanely fast CPU but also its battery life. I was actually able to surf the web on Wi-Fi with around 150 to 160 nits of brightness with the battery lasted me over 11 hours. And this is much thanks to AMD's brand new 
35 watt 7 nanometer monolithic sand 2 based Ryzen 4000 ship which as a bonus also feature a fairly powerful IGP that you can actually game on with pretty darn good results. Anyway the Sephiroth G14 comes in at least 4 different configurations. Now the cheapest one starts at just over $1000 and it comes with the Ryzen 5 4600H and a 1650 Ti and the flagship comes equipped with an 8 core a Ryzen 9 4900HS cooped with a RTX 2060 Max-Q and in the middle we find the machine that I'm testing out today. This one's got a Ryzen 7 4800HS processor and a GTX 1660 Ti Max-Q. This one has an MSRP of 1299 As for the build quality, thanks to the aluminum case, the base feels very solid and there is no twisting or cracking when attempting to bend its corners. The keyboard center yields only so slightly when applied pressure and the hinges are satisfying with no cracking as well. Unfortunately, the outer lid is a bit more flexible and yeah, that is where it's bent more easily. Now the G14 comes in two different colors, we got black and white and if you're planning to game late at night, I recommend picking up the black variant as the white one that I'm demonstrating on comes with white keycaps making the LED lightning very hard to see and the black keyboard fixes that. As for I.O. we're getting dual USB Type-A ports and dual USB Type-C ports. We're also getting an HDMI 2.0 but unfortunately there is no Ethernet port. But still overall this is pretty good. Speaking of the ventilation and cooling, because of its slim size, yes the G14 gets very hot when gaming. This is a bit unfortunate. There is no real way to fix that other than perhaps undervolting the system or perhaps getting a uh, cooling pad to help it cool fast. But yeah, this is something to have in mind guys because it's getting quite hot here. I recommend having headphones if you not want to get too disturbed by the fan noise. Which kind of leads us over to gaming performance. Again, the machine I'm testing on comes configured with an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Ti with Max-Q. Now, it is important to have in mind that Max-Q performs about 10-50% to slower than a regular 1660 Ti for laptops. As for gaming performance, for the most part, the performance difference between the Predator Helios 300 and the G14 is not as big as I was expecting. Sure, it is obvious that the Max-Q variant takes a small hit thanks to a slow or clock speeds but for the most part yes we're still able to reach a very stable and satisfying average frame rate and considering the small size and mobility of the G14 I'm very impressed by these results but it gets even better the integrated GPU is not that bad either now if you're looking for a slim lightweight high-end gaming machine with fantastic specs and battery life and you're willing to accept the fact that the system can get quite hot when gaming and you understand that the cooling can get quite noisy and you're okay with that, then I would highly recommend the Sephiroth G14 from Asus and again links can be found down below. Lastly, yes we got the Asus Tough Series and if you're looking for a cheap mobile entry to ray tracing and DX12 Ultimate, the Asus Tough FX505 or A15 might be your answer. This one features 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabytes of super fast M.2 SSD, an RTX 2060 and a third gen Ryzen processor if you you opt for the 2019 edition and for a few dollars more you can opt for the A15 which is the 2020 model and this one features a 4th gen Ryzen 4800H processor. Now the top series definitely breeds gaming. Let's start with the build quality. The lid as well as the base is made of plastic which is a bit disappointing to see but Asus has made sure that there is minimal flexing and it definitely doesn't feel cheap in any way in my opinion but it does catch fingerprints quite easily. Now flipping it open the 2019 model features a 15.6 1080p IPS 120Hz matte finish screen while the 2020 model features the same type of screen but uh, with a slightly higher 144Hz refresh rate. As for specifications, the 2019 edition comes configured with AMD's 3rd gen Ryzen 5 3550H processor but a 3750H processor is also available. While 3rd gen Ryzen on desktop performs similar to Intel's latest processors on the mobile side, 3rd gen Ryzen is unfortunately nowhere near the desktop counterparts. The 2020 model comes with AMD's brand new 4th gen 4800H processor which as you can see is miles faster than previous generations. It should be said guys if you're opting for the 2019 edition, this is this laptop's biggest uh, drawback I should say. The processor here can definitely
to be a bottlenecking factor. This is however not a problem with the 2020 model. And as we can see, yes, this has an impact on the performance and we're seeing fairly low minimum frame rates in some of the AAA games. So this is definitely due to the processor. And while eSport games runs pretty good on the 2019 model, it is safe to say that between the CPU and GPU, there is no argue that the CPU is holding back the 2060, especially in games where there is not a lot of graphic details. And so if you're specifically looking to play eSport like games, I would much rather recommend picking up the Acer Helios 300 or the 2020 model. But overall, if you can pick up the FX505 at quite cheap, I still think it's a valid option. But if you can find A15 for $1000, this is definitely the one to pick. Now, all links can be found down below and if you have any questions, please let me know. Now, watch either of these two videos to learn more and I will see you guys in the next video.